It's about time we go over the answer to weekly math challenge 15. And this time we have the winner once again. And it is Nick L. And he said the answer was 0 0.760. The actual answer is 0 0.771. This is the actual answer. But I said I thought 0 0.76 is only about 0 0.01 off. And I thought that was close enough to be counted as the winner of this weekly Math Challenge 15. A huge congratulations to Nickel. But now let's try to actually go over this question and try to obtain the answer of 0 0.771. Okay, so we know the scores on the test is normally distributed. And whenever you have normal distribution, the two parameters that should come to your mind if you have taken statistics class is mean and standard deviation or mean and variance. But in this video, we're going to focus on mean and standard deviation because if we know mean and standard deviation for normal distribution, we can find anything about the normal distribution because that's all normal distribution is based upon. Once we know mean, so that's mean, once we know mean and standard deviation, we should be able to do any question about normal distribution. But the thing is, they are not giving us the value for mean and standard deviation. So maybe, maybe we have to find them. Anyway, <clears throat> the question continues. When a random student is selected, he or she has 30% probability of failing the test. And if you read on, I said the minimum score for passing is 60 points. So there's 30% probability of failing or scoring below the scoring below 60 points. And one way of visualizing that is to think of a normal curve. That's the normal distribution. And let's say you have a bell curve going. I'm not the best artist when it, com when it comes to bell curve, but hopefully that's close enough. And you have a mean and you have certain standard deviation. And we know there's the area to the left of 60. The probability of scoring below 60 is 0.3 or 30%. So you know this area, this area to the left. Remember that when you're talking about continuous probability distribution, area and probability are the same thing. So this area is going to be 0.3. So we know that. What else do we know? We know there's 60% probability of scoring between between 60 points and 80 points. So let me just put 80. We don't. Well, let. I think 80 should be to the right of the mean, as we are about to find out. So that's 80. And we know th this area, the area at the center, is 0 0.6. So you know this area is 0 0.6. Or another way of thinking about it this area to the right of 80, because every area under the curve has to add up to 1, has to be 0 0.1. The reason being, you have 0 0.3 and 0 0.9 adding up to 0 0.3 and 0 0.6 adding up to 0 0.9. So you need extra 0 0.1 for every area to add up to 1. And remember that all of the probability for the given situation has to be 1. So this area is 0 0.1. Anyway, and that's one reason 80 has to be to the right of the mean because it, the area to the right is less than 0 0.5. So, you know, this drawing to the scale is about accurate, not, not very accurate, but it's okay. We, we should be able to work with it. Anyway, if two students are randomly selected, we want to find the probability that the arithmetic mean of their score is above failing. So we want to find some area given that two students are selected and we are looking at arithmetic mean. Okay, so that's very interesting and all, but the only way we are going to be able to find the area under the normal distribution is if we know the mean and standard deviation. And obviously, we have to figure those out. So you may say, since we have all of this information given to us, maybe we can use this to find the mean and standard deviation. And you'd be absolutely correct. So how do we do it? Well, 
you know area to the left of 60 is 0 0.3 and using that you can find the z score z score the corresponding z score for 60 you can either look this up in in a normal distribution table or you can use some statistical software or even even ti84 ti84 calculator has capability of finding z score anyway the z score should be for this negative 0 0.5 five two four four or something like that and z score for 80 should be z score for 80 using the fact that 0 0.9 is to the left of 80 or 0 0.1 is to the right of 80 depending on what table or software you're using the z score is 1.2816 of course the decimal continues i'm 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 rounding it off at the ten thousandth place anyway how do we find z-score? Well, z-score, you find z-score once you have the value and you're subtracting the mean and you're dividing by standard deviation because z-score is going to tell us how many standard deviation away from the mean your value is located. So that's, how, I'm not going to get in-depth statistics. Let me just solve this question for this video. I may go more in-depth about z-score in the future videos if I decide to make statistic playlist. Anyway, so we know 60 minus mu over standard deviation is negative 0 0.5244. You can be more precise if you want to. I was when I obtained the answer 0 0.771. I actually went to eighth decimal place or something like that. Anyway, and you know 80 minus mu over standard deviation is 1.2816 and using this let's rearrange this just a bit 60 minus mu over sigma let's multiply by sigma so sigma goes here and sigma goes away so sigma goes away sigma goes there i'm just multiplying both equations by sigma and we know from the first one 60 minus mu is this quantity or 60 is equal to mu minus this quantity and the same reasoning for this one, I'm just rearranging. 80 is equal to mu plus 1.2816 sigma. And now this is just a system of equations for which you can find mu and sigma. And solving the system of equations, I'm not going to go in depth, you should get mean of about 65.807 and standard deviation of about 11.074. Okay, so we know mean and standard deviation. So we know mean is, let me write this down, 65.807. Standard deviation is 11.074. And what do you want to do? Well, we want to find the probability that arithmetic mean of a sample, we have a sample of two students. So we have sample size, or n, is equal to 2. And now we have to know a very famous theorem in statistics or the most important theorem in statistics almost unarguably every statistics teacher you go to is going to tell you central limit theorem central limit theorem is the most important theorem in all of statistics because it's telling you how important normal distribution is but i'm not going to get to how you, the sampling distribution approaches normal distribution and all of that. I'm going to focus on the part that if you're picking a sample of size n equals to 2 or any n, in fact, your new, your new mean is going to stay the same. So it's going to be new mean is still going to be old mean. But your new, ver new standard deviation is going to be old standard deviation divided by square root of n. That's one part of the central limit theorem. It's not the most important part of central limit theorem, but it's still pretty important nonetheless. And it's the part we need f to solve this question. So we know our mu is going to stay the same. Our mu is going to be old mu, but our standard deviation is going to be a, the standard deviation divided by square root of n or square root of two. So we have found the mean and standard deviation for the distribution for the arithmetic mean of sample size n equals to 2. And now we have a new normal, new normal curve going on with our new mean, with our new mean and sigma. And we wish to find 
the probability that this score is above, above failing. So we have 60 and we want to find the area to the right of 60 and you can use table, normal distribution table or st statistical software and the area you're going to get or the, our final answer is going to be 0 0.771 when rounded to thousands. So our final answer for this weekly math challenge question is 0 0.771.